Hi, I'm George Chamberlain, and I'm here at the Aquaculture Symposium in Antigua, Guatemala, and I'm and I'm here beside uh, Luis Fernando Arungun, who's uh, one of the speakers today, talking about a serious disease in shrimp farming called white feces disease, and we're really excited to learn more about the cause of this and maybe the control. So, Fernando, what do you think? Uh, Tell us what, what's going on with this new disease. Thank you, George, for this invitation. Well, white feces is a pattern that basically the fecal strings of shrimp are white color and they, they float. They float on the shrimp pond. So that is why it was a syndrome because nobody really knows what was the cause of this syndrome. Later on, we start working on what is the cause or what is associated with white feces? And we found that EHP is definitely highly associated with the presence of white feces. And what is, what is EHP? Oh, that's a good question. EHP stands for enterocytosome hepatopenase. This is basically a microsporidium that has been found in the shrimp industry in Southeast Asia. And recently there are some possible cases in Latin America as well. So what we have seen is that animals in the early stage of EHP, they don't display any, any white feces. But later on, the animals are start getting a whitish discoloration on the GI tract. And even later, the animals display the really white discoloration on the GI tract. That's what we have seen in the farm. Now, what happened is at the end of the cycle, the animals, they don't die from, from EHP. But it seems that the animals at the end, they die from secondary pathogens. Usually those are vivious. So do you have any thoughts about how to try to control this white feces and the EHB, you know, at the farm level? Well, yeah, that's, that's not uh, an easy answer. But basically, the first thing is to have a clean brewster. That's kind of the rule number one make sure that the animals are tested negative for EHP. Then, of course, the nuclei and post larvae, before stocking into the pond, also it's important to make a test. Usually real-time PCR is the most sensitive test to make sure that the animals are still negative. Now, at pond level, you can increase the water filtration, make sure that between different runs, you disinfect the whole grow pond Usually it's recommended a high pH disinfectant in order to make the EHP spore to germinate. So when it happens, basically they will lose the infectivity. Oh, that's fantastic. So if you can get them to germinate before they get into the shrimp, it's a one-shot deal. They've already spent their cell and, and they are no longer infected. Exactly. Ah, and that's one of the approaches uh, that can be used at commercial level. And I can only imagine that it must be a lot easier to treat a plastic lined pond than an earthen pond, you know, with oh, a high pH solution. Definitely. Especially because if you have a liner pond, you can actually disinfect and remove easily most of the organic matter. If you have an earthen pond, this process is more difficult. And I'm also hearing that this disease is associated with the organic matter in a pond. So a lot of farms put in what are commonly known as shrimp toilets, you know, a place to pump out the, the waste, the organic waste. And what do you think? Is that another way to help manage the density of the pathogen? That, that's a good point. And definitely it helps. Because the most organic matter, the more suitable environment, for the EHP replication. And that is one of the reasons that EHP usually appears in the middle or towards the end of the cycle because there is more accumulation of organic matter. So what people is doing, the ones that have this toilet system, they flush down as much as they can, several times per day, in order to minimize the amount of organic matter that is gonna serve as a reservoir for the spores. So what would you say would be the symptom that a farmer might see that might be a warning that he has EHP? I guess the white feces. Right, but previous of that, and 
the shrimps, you will start seeing the disparity in sizes. So as, you, as soon as you see some, like a coefficient of variation, that usually could be below 20%, but if it's 25, 30%, you might have in the same pond two different types of populations, a normal population and, all, and also a small population. Usually those populations are the ones that are infected by, by EHP. So when it happens, later on, the animals will display the white pieces, the feed conversion rate will go high, and, and they stop growing huh? and they stop growing and then you will see clearly two populations one normal population growing just fine but the small population that probably is the one that is heavily infected but in that beginning stage you say they normally well they might not die they might just not grow huh? right at the beginning and probably at the middle of the cycle you just see that the animals are not growing but later on you will start seeing some uh, mortality but not directly because of the EHP, but because of the secondary pathogens. Usually, even in a healthy shrimp, you find vibrio in hepatopancreas. So those vibrio uh, that are, those hepatopancreas that are previously infected by EHP, later on, the vibrios that are also there will be able to colonize these areas uh, on, the, on the EHP. That's uh, fascinating, that's a huge help. Thank you so much for the update, Fernando. You're welcome, Great George. Nice to see you. Nice to yeah, see you too. Thanks for tuning in.